Hey everybody, welcome to Planes Overhead. I know it's been long, uh, we've been a little busy of late. Anyway, we are continuing with our radio navigation series and just a short disclaimer for you that uh, this is all just for your easier understanding and it has been picked up from different books. All right, so we're doing a VOR today and uh, continuing on the radio navigation series, we have VOR which stands for VHF Omnidirectional Range and it produces 360 radials uh, spaced at one degree spacing which are aligned to the magnetic north at the VOR. So there's a antenna array that is set up on the airfield where it produces 360 degree radials beams imaginary beams that is spaced at one degrees okay and it can be used in day and night both it operates within the frequency range of 108 to 117 decimal 95 megahertz and it is generally paired with dme to give instantaneous range so vor is generally paired with dme it's called vor dme which will give us the range from the station distance measuring equipment okay so how does it work principle of operation uh, VOR bearing is obtained by phase comparison. This is very, very important here, phase comparison, okay? So, a 30 hertz frequency modulated omnidirectional with constant phase as a reference signal is transmitted. Okay, so there's a signal that is 30 hertz frequency modulated omnidirectional and it has a constant phase which is called the reference signal that is transmitted. And a 30 hertz amplitude modulated directional signal with variable phase in the previous one it is constant phase in this it's variable phase is transmitted which is created by the rotating transmission pattern and that is called limacon all right so then these two signals are synchronized to give zero phase difference when the aircraft is due north so the north is being used as a reference where the phase difference is zero any other position wherever the aircraft is the phase difference will be reading the magnetic bearing from the vor so all this is pretty much theory and this is how the polar diagram looks okay so this is the omnidirectional signal which is present in all directions okay and uh, there's a rotational rotating directional signals which is 30 revolutions per second which results in a resultant limacon which is rotating clockwise and the phase difference between the rotating directional signal and the omnidirectional signal will give us the position of the aircraft okay this is how it looks as you can see here the phase difference is zero at north okay so the red the blue and the red waves is what the comparison the phase comparison is done okay so whatever the phase difference is between them is where the aircraft is located all right so that's how so for a phase difference of 180 you'll have a sinusoidal wave which is looking like this and 270 is like that okay so that's how the phase difference between the modulated waves of the omnidirectional and the directional signal is compared all right frequencies uh, vr operates in the vhf band of course its frequency as i mentioned earlier 108 to 117 decimal 905 megahertz 40 channels is in the 108 to 112 megahertz Actually, this range is an ILS band, but is also used for short range VOR and TVOR, which is terminal VOR, okay? VOR frequencies are given even decimal digits. So in this range, what happens is since the uh, ILS is also sharing the band, so ILS is given, you know, the odd uh, digits, decimal digits, and the VOR shares, shares the even decimal digits. So 108 decimal 25, 110 decimal 4, which is an even digit here, 11 decimal 6, decimal six is an even number okay and 120 channels are there in the next part of the band which is 1122 to 1122 to 117 decimal 905 as you can see here 108 to 11795 it's been split between the frequency band so emission uh, this is just for your theory this is a three letter identifier and is transmitted as alpha 9 whiskey alpha is the main carrier amplitude modulated double side band 9 is composite system, W is the combination of telemetry, telephony and telegraphy. Alright, this is just for your emission, uh, just for your information, it may just be asked in the exam. So the code is Alpha 9 Whiskey for the VOR. Okay, types of VOR we have is Bravo VOR, which is called as broadcast VOR, used to give weather and airfield information, which is like the ATIS, basically. Then you have DVOR, Doppler VOR, which overcomes sight errors, which we will be talking about at the end of the video. TVOR 
this terminal VOR. It's a low power VOR used at major airfields, you know, uh, just for terminal area purposes, not a long range VOR where you are requiring over the oceans or long distances. So it's a very short range, low power VOR. VOT, it's a test VOR. It's omnidirectional VOR used to test VOR equipment before the IFR flight. It's a pretty much an outdated concept, but still being used at some airfields. And plus or minus four degree error at at a holding point, particular holding point, it requires equipment servicing. Okay, so it's just used for testing the VOR before going for the flight. So factors affecting accuracy. So site error is basically all your uneven terrain like hills and man-made structures, long grass in the vicinity of the transmitter, etc they you know create error to the beams that are being radiated so this is around about plus or minus one degree is the site error so propagation error is caused by the fact that you left the viewer with plus or minus one degree accuracy and then the further transmission is affected by further dis terrain and the distance itself okay which caused the bending of the beams and scalloping and all of that scalloping is like imperfection or deviation in the received viewer signal and it causes the radials to deviate from the track and results in reflections from big buildings or terrains or you know something like that airborne equipment error itself is like the manufacturing error which is there on the equipment itself and uh, you know maximum the error should be at plus three degrees and pilotage error is where you are actually uh, not able to judge the radial correctly so that itself is pilotage error where you are not able to tell the radial correctly so the above errors are aggregate errors to give a total error of plus five degrees okay you're not supposed to have more than that factors affecting range so range is affected by transmission of the transmission power the more the transmission power the better the range higher the range okay then you have line of sight range so the VOR as you know is a line of sight concept so if the aircraft is below the line of sight the range is affected okay so you will not get signals if you're too low or too far away uneven terrain mountainous regions your range is affected drastically okay and uh, the theoretical reception range maximum theoretical reception range that is is given by 1 decimal 25 into root of h1 plus root of h2 where h1 is the receiver of the height a receiver height in feet in above mean sea level and h2 is the transmitter height in feet above mean sea level so if the transmitter station is at let's say 1000 feet and receiver is at the aircraft itself then you take a root of that add it and multiply to that so that's the theoretical reception range perhaps it is pretty much uh, more uh, you know uh, in terms of uh, deflections and reflections from various uh, obstacles that are there around so it can get sometimes much more range because of oceans maybe okay that's about the range now cone of confusion is an interesting thing so what happens is when you approach the viewer the viewer needle becomes more sensitive so near the overhead the viewer there is a loss of signal completely due to the fact that there is no planned radiation in that zone so the radials that are there the antennas that are there are supposed to transmit in a pretty much a horizontal direction so above the viewer the vertical there is no transmission as such so there is no planned radiation in that zone this zone is actually called the cone of ambiguity or cone of confusion and ECAO requires VOR installations to provide stable signals up to a minimum elevation angle of 40 degrees. That's the ECAO requirement. And uh, this is how it looks. So if the aircraft is passing from here, you'll enter a cone of confusion where there'll be, you know, um, no signal and the radials will fluctuate, the needles will fluctuate and the flag will change. Okay. Uh, generally, technically speaking, this this is the ECAO minimum, but uh, VOR these days are providing ranges up to 80, 80 85 degrees. Okay, so there's a cone of com confusion which is pretty much less. Now talking about the Doppler viewer, which is the second generation viewer, it has uh, improved, uh, you know, the sight. It has improved accuracy by removing the sight error. So what it what it has done is the reference signal has become now amplitude modulated, and the variable phase directional signal has become frequency modulated. So that has helped to re remove the sight error. Earlier, the reference signal in the normal VOR used to be frequency modulated. Now, in this, the reference signal is amplitude modulated. So, that is what has helped Doppler VOR remove sight error, which has, of course, improved the error. Accuracy is improved. 
and the rotation of the directional signal in this is by the way anti clockwise okay so this is important all right i think uh, that's about it thank you for watching guys you can subscribe to the youtube channel and like the facebook page for regular updates give the video a thumbs up if you like this video do not forget to share this video comment below if you have any doubts i'll surely get back to you you can always find me on the links mentioned on the screen and i hope to come up with a video soon cheers and happy learnings guys have a great evening bye bye